Picard 45. Hey, that's a pretty revolver. I'll have to say. A Kimber K6S Dasa. Yes, three inch. It's so pretty. I hate to shoot it, but I'm going to get it all smoked up and dirty. And I'll start out on a pumpkin even. How's that? Woohoo! Give that pumpkin a bath. <laughs> oh, nice little group. Double action. Boom. Let's shoot one more time. No, let's don't. <laughs> it's a six shooter. Takes us back to the old west, doesn't it? A uh, six shooter. It only holds six. It holds only six. Okay, but that's okay because, you know, a lot of little revolvers don't even hold six anymore. The 357 Magnum. Uh, it's a small gun, though. I, I really probably wouldn't want to shoot a lot of 357 Magnum in it, uh, depending on what you're going to carry. But anyway, this is the K6 in the three-inch uh, version. You know, I own, maybe you don't know that yet, uh, you know, lots of new people every day, week, month, year. Uh, we did this revolver, the standard K6. Uh, well, gosh, how long has that been, John? A couple of years now? Whenever it came out, a little bit after it came out, uh, we don't race to get them a center out, but it was shortly after it had come out, I think. And uh, I like it. <laughs> it really uh, struck a chord with me. I was surprised that I was gonna that I did like it. It, it surprised John and me both. Uh, and uh, just couldn't get it out of the back of my mind. And it eventually moved to the front of my mind. It didn't take too long, and I just had to buy one. Yeah, I really did. I just I just bought one for myself. I like it, and I have carried it, and it still has a role for me as a defensive uh, firearm uh, daily. I won't mention where and how, but it is, and it has been in my pocket. Not not recently, but uh, let me say I got the uh, uh, air weight now, but it rides in a pocket without any trouble. It's just a little heavier than the air weight. That's really the only thing. It's not much any bigger at all. And it, it is a pocket gun. It's, a, it's nice. And uh, again, I think I showed this in another video. I'll mix these up. But as far as size, like this is the air weight holster. See, it, it's, it goes in there. It doesn't snap in perfectly, but it would work. It doesn't like pooch it out or anything. So they're about the same size. That's amazing. That was loaded. That's my pocket gun, my carry gun. And I want to keep it handy just in case I need it, right? Uh, these zombies wander onto the uh, range here while we're, we're shooting. Uh, so, yes, I had to have one. Uh, bought it from a gun shop. And in keeping with the theme today, the topic, I went to look at, well, I didn't know if I went to look for a gun. Yeah, it is. You go into a gun shop to, to browse, and sometimes you come home with a firearm. So I don't remember what the, <laughs> why I was there. I think the reason I was there is the, the same reason I'm at a gun show, and I see a lot of you at the gun shows. It's uh, because there are guns there. Same reason I end up in a gun shop. You know, there are guns there. You know, so don't have to be looking for anything specifically. And uh, I'm going to tell you how that relates to that. Before I uh, forget, though, also I want to thank Atmex.com, the American Precious Metals Exchange. You see some goodies over there. That big 10 ounce bar of pure silver. They got all kinds of that stuff at their website. They're a huge online dealer, very reputable. Uh, John and I have used them, lots of people do. They're, they're well known. So uh, we appreciate their support. Don't forget about them. Check them out. There's a link in the description, okay? And, uh, and atmex.com, it's not hard to remember either, is it? Well, it might be for me. I have trouble remembering anything, but uh, pretty simple. So yeah, I went into the shop or I was looking at it, I saw that, that these had just come out, the three inch versions. And I don't remember if the hammer, I don't think the hammer version was out yet, but uh, I saw the three inch and I said, you know, cause I was in that mode that, you know, I, that thing, like I said, was in the back of my mind. I gotta have one of these, I think. And so I said, let me see that three inch uh, version because you know, I love three inch barrels on uh, revolvers. I, I brought out my, my three inch model 65, just again, as evidence, I could have brought out a 629, Two of them with three inch barrels. I could have brought out my 686 with three inch barrel, uh, my GP100 with three inch barrel. I love that length of barrel, okay, on a, on a firearm. And uh, so I just knew, uh, saw it lying there, picked it up, and had asked to, to look at it, that I'd probably walk out with, with this. Again, I think it was the internal hammer version. 
but and I've maybe told this story before. Something about it, though, in this smaller gun, it, it didn't appeal to me as much. I know as I thought it would, and it was it was a surprise to me. I said, well, let me see this other one, which I think the same configuration we we reviewed. And I pulled it up and, and I said, you know what? I just like this variant of it, this version of it, and I bought it. Okay. So, uh, with that said, you all have requested it, and uh, we wanted to you know get it and shoot it some and let you know what we think of it and see if that was just uh, maybe an aberration. I was in a weird mood that day or something, and and and, and again, it doesn't matter. Uh, well, I mean, hopefully it matters a little bit, but whether or not I like something or reject it or love it, uh, you know, doesn't mean you're going to like it or reject it or love it or hate it or anything. Okay. It's just, just my opinion. Uh, so anyway, I'm not as crazy about a three inch barrel on this gun for some reason, but this is a really nice pistol. No doubt about it. The difference as you see, and one of the big ones is of course, not the really a bigger difference than the the added length of the barrel is the hammer. You've got an external hammer, right? And uh, a lot of people have been requesting an external hammer. Let's shoot something. What should we shoot? Uh, and you got that on this. So you can shoot it single action or double action. And guess what? The name, hence the name, DASA. And they actually call it DASA. Uh, it doesn't necessarily just stand, just stand for double action, single action. They call it the DASA. I uh, saw so the, the got shot show calling it from Kimber and so, <laughs> so this is a DASA all right DASA is a very unusual animal uh, except every single Smith and Wesson and Ruger that I have is a DASA <laughs> it's a double action and single action so that just means you've got both right put some uh, plus P's in here we'll work our way up maybe to some magnums <laughs> I, I tend to in little revolvers uh, I'd like a little revolver uh, that is magnum capable uh, although my airways not but I, I generally carry plus P you know 38 special uh, for defense okay and uh, it, to me that's fine that's fine let's try this target and I think probably most people not not everybody certainly a lot of people if it's magnum man they're gonna have hot magnum rounds in it whether they can shoot or not, you know, they're going to have them in there. But these are pretty warm uh, for social encounters, would probably work just fine. You know, the double action is nice. Click. It, uh, you know, it, it feels pretty good. I shoot these little guns double action, so having a hammer uh, it doesn't impress me at all. It's in the way. It's a it's another thing to snag on, you know I'm the guy who took a nice perfectly uh, new at the time model 65 and Ground the hammer off of it the hammer spur. That's that's me So, you know when I say I'm not crazy about hammer spurs. <laughs> I'm really not in a small compact uh, You know carry revolver Okay, now you get into the bigger ones. It's going to be a, in a big old holster outside the belt. See this this gun even it's a K frame Smith and Wesson uh, in an inside the waistband, a uh, very minimalist holster. You know, even in something like a, you could even carry that in a uh, we call it an appendix carry holster or something like that. It's 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 a nice little gun. So you know, snag free and you know non adjustable sights. So totally snag free. I like that in a firearm, in a defensive firearm, if the sights are on, and they are with that. That's one of the appeals of the Glock, the old Glock, I talk about them, right, is they're just snag free. They're just totally melted almost, and that's the way these are. So I melted this one, melted it down, ground it down. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I don't like hammer spurs on little revolvers. Uh, and I'm not going to get into all the, the legal issues of that. You can read up on it. Generally speaking, though, uh, for a defensive revolver, you want to be able to shoot at double action. You know, when you cock it, uh, now you could argue the same thing for a 1911 and other firearms, I realize. When you cock it, you know what you've got, kind of a hair trigger, you know, and then, and also, what are these guns for? 
and say you're carrying it and I didn't have a holster for it today let's say I've got a holster or whatever I mean it's a defensive pistol and you want to pull a shoot in a situation where it's just not going to snag and bang bang and you're going to you're just going to pull that trigger right through you don't need single action for that what are you going to do someone's they're on top of you oh let me cock this and get a precision shot you know maybe so I won't get too deeply into that because I'm not an expert I'm not a trainer consult Clint Smith, Clint Smith or Tiger McKee or any number of other folks about that and uh, they may you know differ in opinion or, or or whatever but with a little revolver uh, yeah it would be who I would encourage you to learn to shoot double action okay it's something that a lot of people don't have a lot of skill in because they may not have even shot a revolver that much and so it's just so much easier to uh, to cock that thing and, and get a, a good hit you know uh, but I mean, you know, it's nice to have that capability, you know, it, it, you know, it is, it's more fun at the range, no doubt about it. And also with these things, both of them, especially this one, when you caught, when you start pulling that thing through, you kind of stage your trigger, you get to a point where it's really like having a single action. It, it really is like a Ruger revolver. They're kind of that way too. And this one's maybe not as good. I don't know why, but it's, you know, you can, you can tell when you're, in the, the break zone okay so you have control over it for precision more precision shooting okay so what else let's shoot the thing but this is uh it runs about gosh it must rp is like over 900 bucks but i think they run around 850 so it's not cheap got the nice grips on it uh you know size three dot sights this is one thing that's kind of cool about these these kimber k6s you got kind of a combat sight, like something you would see on a or put on a uh, a semi-auto pistol, you know, three dot sights, okay, and uh, not the standard like Smith and Wesson leaf sights and all that. So, they really are nice defensive pistols. Uh, I, I almost can't say enough good about these. I really like them. I think you've probably gathered that. I guess I'll shoot some magnums. Just keep my man card here. Uh, but they, they have done a bang up job on their first go around with revolvers. Of course, now it's been, what, two or three years, but, uh, and they've got, well, there must be six or eight different versions of it. I wouldn't mind seeing them come out. Uh, Kimber, are you listening? I would like to see this gun in a, uh, an air weight uh, frame. That'd be kind of cool, you know, like my little Smith uh, air weight 642. And boy, you get this firearm, because it's got a lot of frame, a lot of meat to it. If you made that out of whatever, titanium, scandium, aluminum, uh, paper mache, whatever it requires, and it still has enough strength, it's going to stay together pretty well. Uh, that would be cool. Maybe you could even do something with the cylinder to get it down to the same weight. Wow, if this thing weighed the same, whatever it required, uh, as an airweight smith, you might not quite be able to get that, that light. Uh, it, it would never leave my pocket. It would be cool. Okay. Unless I needed it to. Right? <laughs> All right. Just to prove I'm not a wimp. Magnums. Uh, and this is range ammo, American Eagle. But as you know, if you've been around a while. It's pretty warm stuff. Okay. So it would be a lot better with rubber grips. Uh, let's shoot something with this stuff. Okay. So we got hot ammo. Woo! I might not be able to hit any. Let's try that cinder down there. Get my ears in tight. Uh. All right. How about that pumpkin? I don't know if it'll do anything else to it. Woo! All right. Magnum rolled him off. Let's get him. <laughs> I don't know if I hit him on the run or not. Let's see if I can hit a uh, two liter down there. Let's see if I can hit this one. Think I can hit it? No, nah, I wouldn't do that. It'd be, I guess, safe enough. I'd end up drenched. All right, this is probably asking more of me than I can deliver. Uh. Woo! <laughs> yeah, I meant to tell you, I was shooting at that pig, actually. I uh, wanted to hit it before I shot the two-liter. Uh, I went left again, I think. Uh, I have noticed that I have a tendency in my shooting with it before the video 
then I have to be careful or I will shoot a little bit left. Of course, with one hand, so you're more likely, but I, uh, partly because it's kind of a thin, a thin grip, and that was something I wanted to point out. You definitely want to hold all these if you're looking at these. One thing about the grip on this one, again, not to make excuses, but I do, I need a, with a small, the smaller the gun, a little thickness really helps me. One of the reasons I like this so much is the grip just feels so much better than that. I don't care if it's uglier. It just feels great. It's got a little more meat down here in the lower part, and it just fills the hand where it needs to, whereas this one's just very thin. Uh, so maybe it'll be better carrying you know, inside the waistband or something. Uh, you've got it a little bit thinner action there. But just there's just to be aware of that. Uh, let me try. I don't know. I may have been anticipating the, the recoil as well, but I, I tend to shoot it. Although I have to say, it wasn't all that bad. It, it didn't kick as much. That's the first time I fired the Magnums in it. It didn't feel as bad as I thought it would. Not at all. Not at all. Let me try that. I think the sights are right on, so, so that's just me missing. I'll try to use double action. Like I say, you can kind of stage the trigger. I'll do both hands, though. Maybe I'll be less likely to do that. <laughs> or more likely. There we go. Let's try that cowboy in the hat. Ooh, flick, flick. I think it uh, it shoots fine. I think it might be depending on what ammo you have in it. Maybe just a little bit below point of aim, but uh, but not not bad. It's a defensive pistol. And I think part of the appeal of this one is uh, you know pretty good sights. You know, and a hammer a little bit bigger that folks are more likely to see this as a firearm they can enjoy a nice defensive gun and also a, a something they can enjoy and shoot target shoot you know at the range with it maybe a little more than the short barrel one you know be my guess uh, and that's that's always nice because you really do want to enjoy the the firearm you carry be able to shoot it take to the range enjoy putting a box or two through it you'll just get better with it and you'll be better armed you know and you'll enjoy the gun more uh, but that said, uh, that rubber grip, and I guess those are available. It's the Kimber. I don't know who makes it for Kimber, but it, it is, it is a, f a fine grip. All right, I definitely compliment them on that uh, tremendously. Uh, this feels great. So, three-inch barrel. Uh, you know, uh, same, same gun. You know, obviously, uh, pretty much. And I don't know if they really changed that much and at all uh, since that one was made. I just thought if I had that a year, maybe a year and a half, I don't know, a little longer. Uh, so it's mainly the grip and the, uh, you know, the fact you've got an exposed hammer. Now, does this one have a hammer? Yeah, it has a hammer. Definitely has a hammer. It has to have a hammer. Uh, something to hit the firing pin, right? Uh, or the primer, or it's not going to go bang. So let's shoot it again. You know, the, the Kimber, uh, again, you might be new, I, I'll try to link to the other videos uh, with, I guess we have two, you know, on, on this particular model, you know, even though they were different firearms, one of them was uh, borrowed from Bud's and then the other one was this one I purchased. You got the recessed cylinder, you know, that's why when you put ammo in there, I'll, I'll use this one though, my example is the, the dirty one. Uh, you can close the cylinder up just like an old Smith & Wesson. And it's really tight. You know the tolerances. Look at that. you can't even see between there, hardly. So you don't have much of a gap at all. Uh, so it's you know, the old, it takes you back to the old days of the Smith and Wesson in, in a way, doesn't it? So well, like like this one's not, you know. Okay, because it's newer. All right, let's do something else here. How about let's smoke a little pot, which we've not done yet. Uh, how about that one? We'll go double action. Boom. Try a double action on that one. There we go. And that one. <laughs> so again, if you had to pull this and shoot, uh, just because they have the hammer doesn't mean you want to pull that hammer back. And you're probably not going to be shooting as far away as that cowboy down there. You know. Uh, but let me shoot the coffin over there. Double action. Yeah. So double action. Uh, you know, you can hold it on pretty well. The firearm has some heft to it. You see that kind of that under lug. So uh, I think it's 25 ounces, is that right? It's three ounces heavier than this. 
the, then the, the smaller one. So I, I weighed them. I forgot. Yeah, like 25 and uh, or 23 and 26, I think is what it was. Yeah, I think this one was 26 ounces on my scale, and then that was like 23. So you get a little more weight, but you get more sight radius, and uh, and you get a, a hammer you can cock. Okay, so that's the big advantage. You see these in the shop, and you're looking at them. I don't know if there's a lot of these uh, for rent at a rental range. I always recommend that. These are pretty, uh, excuse me, pretty pricey. So, you know, they may not be in a lot of ranges for rent. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, you know, they're both great shooters. Uh, a lot of it comes down to how you're going to use it and carry it. You know, what kind of holster you're going to use. Uh, is it just a home defense firearm? Uh, you're going to carry it inside the waistband, outside the waistband, in a fanny pouch, uh, excuse me, a belt, belt pack, right? Uh, you know, all that makes a difference. Shoulder holster, appendix carry, uh, you want to think about the hammer spur, depending on how you're going to carry it. Is that, that's definitely not snag free. It's a nice hammer spur. You can really feel it and you really get friction with that. So, you know, that's the thing about a hammer spur. Okay. Again, if you're carrying an outside the waistband holster, you know, uh, in a, such a fashion that, that that may not be an issue at all. Okay. So, uh, just, uh, you know, weigh all those, those factors in terms of the size. So anyway, nice pistol, nice revolver. They're not cheap, but, uh, they're, they're quality for sure. And I, I don't, we've had any problem with, uh, the, we've had like three of them now, I guess we've shot here at the, the compound, two of this model and then now this one, they just work and they feel great. Great trigger pull and double action and, and, a, and a great single action trigger pull. And uh, so the DASA works, double action, single action. And uh, if you're brand new to firearms, double action, is when you just pull the trigger, cock it and shoot it, single action, you cock it, and you've got a fine light trigger, okay, for more precision work. So double action, single action. With this one, uh, it's really hard to cock the hammer, you know, <laughs> manually. Actually, it's not. I'll cock it right now. It's cocked. Boom. <laughs> you just have to cock it with the trigger, okay? Or not funny. So there you go. You have nice, beautiful grips, three-inch barrel, and a hammer spur. And that might be exactly what you're looking for. Uh, I don't like the hammer spur, the external hammer myself, but it might be exactly what you're looking for and uh, something you should consider. Now, if you're, you know, I'm an old uh, traditionalist. I love my Smiths and my, my Colts. Uh, you know that, don't you, to a fault. And uh, so that's one reason I was ready not to like these, these revolvers. And if you're coming from that perspective, you're, uh, you just love Colts and Smith and Wessons, and maybe you don't even like Kimber. You had a 1911 they made and had problems with it or something like that. You got a mental block against the company, maybe even. And this would be the last revolver you would even think about. I would say rethink that and and try one of these out because they are they are just really really nice. Okay, and I'm supposed to be giving you the negatives and the positives. Uh, it, it, the thing works. So for again, the negatives are for me. Uh, like I like the grip on this rubber grip a lot better. The grip's kind of thin. It's pretty. So uh, for me, it's not as good a grip as that. That's a negative. I don't like the three-inch barrel as much as I like the two or the one and three quarter or whatever it is. That's a negative for me. I don't like the hammer spur uh, on this little pistol. So that's a negative for me. Okay. But other than that, uh, I don't know of any negatives. The things just work and they seem like high quality. So. We wanted to bring it to you, and uh, and uh, there it is. Uh, definitely something to look at if you're in the market for a small revolver, and you got more than 150 bucks because these things ain't cheap. And you're talking 800 dollars, okay? Uh, more than 800 for this one. Uh, so anyway, I can't make up any more lies about it. Uh, pretty cool. Check out our other videos on it. We talk about that cylinder shape and the thinness of the gun and, and all those those things. And uh, nice finish, just this party, really pretty. Appreciate you coming around and uh, supporting uh, what we do, because we love you. Life is good. Hey, go along. Oh, hey, just throwing a little frisbee here on the range. While you're here, I want to remind you to check us out in some other places on the internet and our friends over at Talon Grips. 
You can find us on Facebook and Twitter under Hickok45 and on Instagram under The Real Hickok45 and John underscore Hickok45. Also, go to bunkerbranding.com for our t shirts, hats, patches, and stickers. So, we appreciate, of course, the support from Talon Grips. Go to talongungrips.com. They make all sorts of different textured grips for handguns and rifles. Uh, Dad's been using them for a lot of years. They do great work, and we're happy to have them on board. So, please check them out talongungrips.com. And then, also, don't forget, we have videos on Gun Streamer now. So, if you're watching them over there, you probably already know about it, but if you're not, you might not. So maybe check that out, gunstreamer.com. And uh, hey, there's some more videos being recommended to you that you should probably be watching right now. So I'll let you go. Thanks.